First of all, what are you guys highlighting here at uh, Waste Expo? Well, we're really excited to be talking about the use of our vision system, even beyond the use of it for uh, robotic sorting. Um, what we're seeing is recycling facilities can get a tremendous amount of information from uh, the artificial intelligence algorithms that we have. Um, we have a, a software platform called Clarity that allows you to view this information, download uh, different reports, also set up different types of alerts. And uh, we get excited because we see it as one of these first examples where AI is going beyond sorting, um, but really towards uh, more information for the MRF as a whole, more information around commodities. We've been excited about this for a long time, but really having it come together in this Clarity platform is something we're really uh, pleased for, we, we can showcase. What led to the creation of this kind of technology? Was it uh, a, a need that you saw was being unfulfilled? Or were, were you, did you have customers that were coming to you and asking you to uh, help them out with something? Well, it, you know, it, we first saw the opportunity when we really understood um, sort of the full capabilities of what AI can do in recycling. Um, but yeah, we, we started talking about recycling facilities and understanding, hey, if we have this sensor effectively that can identify all these different types of materials, um, where could that be useful? And we've been talking to customers for a while um, and uh, been really understanding, okay, here are the implications of their business if they really understand their paper quality. And if they can know if the paper is a you know one grade or another, they can really understand if they're meeting a different plastic resin spec or not. Uh, if they're not, what are the sources of contaminations and impact contamination? And have that information feedback into uh, different improvements they can make. All of this information has been really hard and labor intensive to gather until now. So um, yeah, as soon as we started talking to people about it, a lot of these use cases really kind of sprung out of that. Now, is the AI in use right now? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, and well, what, what results have you guys seen? Well, so every robotic system we have uh, can uh, provide access to clarity. Um, you know, even if the robot's sorting PET or UVCs or something like this, uh, it's still seeing the rest of the material. Um, but yeah, so we have different customers using it with their robotic systems, and wherever the robots are in the MRF, uh, they're understanding, okay, something about that, that site or location. We have different customers that are using it to quantify their residue. Um, so that they're saying, okay, what material am I missing? Is there some different way I should be running? How does that change day to day? I get different loads from different communities. What does that do to my material stream? Um, and uh, what we've seen is, you know, insights around uh, when material is surging through the system. When there's sort of like a, a lump that moves through, we used to have all sorts of yield losses uh, that can be, you know, unnecessary. And so, different techniques that smooth out the material flow, uh, different times where kind of contamination is spiking. Um, so at least now they can automatically detect that and react in something closer to real time. That's pretty high end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we think so. We're, we're hoping to move towards the sort of very information driven recycling facility. Um, what we see is there's huge upside, like the, the existing hardware, the existing recycling facilities can do so much more. They can bring their yields up, they can run higher throughputs. Uh, when you start to really optimize and fine tune things, uh, and you know, if you have a clipboard and you're kind of like watching the material streams, there's just too much going on for you to really gather that same kind of information. Is it a uh, an easy sell when you tell when you tell an operator that this is your this is what this tech is going to do for you? Is it or, or, or are they just satisfied with the way you know with the status quo? M many are satisfied with the status quo. I think because some of the uh, information we're providing is new or people haven't had access to it at this frequency. There's a little bit of work to do to kind of show, hey, here is here's sort of how it's hitting your bottom line yeah. uh, and things like this. But what we've seen is. Um, because it's built in with the robot, so the ability to adopt is really just a software switch uh, and logging into the website. Um, you know, some forward-thinking customers are really uh, active in, in using it and uh, figuring out how to use it in their process. But more broadly, I think there's a lot we still want to do to make it immediate and simple to draw connections between uh, what you're seeing and what you can do to optimize it. Right, and what's the learning curve like once this software is installed? Is it like that? For, is it very user friendly? Uh, I, I, I'd say it's pretty user friendly. Uh, of course, I uh, think about pretty much nothing else all day, every day. Uh, but um, but yes, uh, you know, we've done a lot of work. We, we released the first version of this several years ago, and I think that was not too user friendly. We were really excited about all this information we could present and kind of, you know, uh, just put it out there. Uh, but now at this point, we've done a lot of work to continually refine it make it really clear what the conclusions are that you're drawing out of it, specialize it to different types of lines and things like this. We've also done a lot to kind of incorporate data and information from the robots about its operating state. Um, and so beyond just what's on the line, 
what is going on with the robot, what can be done to sort of improve its operation. And so these things naturally, um, you know, give customers a, a number of different uh, use cases uh, that bring them back to the system and, and, and then they can kind of like get used to it and adapt to more advanced features. Um, I imagine you're always working to improve your product. Um, is there anything you can tell us now that you're trying to uh, make better? Yeah. The um, well, yeah. We're we see uh, our robotic systems as something that are going to keep getting better for decades. Um, and because of this, we developed our entire system uh, around this continual learning. It's the continual learning of the neural networks, but also um, the software that runs the robots, and also the way the robots move and our grippers. And so, customers over the last year will have seen. Uh, you know, improved hoses for the suction systems. Then we've seen uh, several different layers of improvements in the HMI, um, as well as these data gathering capabilities, but also more reliable movements from the robots and, and uh, even less maintenance requirements. Um, so, uh, so quite significant sort of like quality of life improvements, reliability improvements. Um, there's also been speed increases to the robot's pick rate. Um, and, uh, you know, we're really happy to you know, be sharing these th through the, our software updates out to the fleet. So even customers who have robots that are several years old are enjoying the benefit of these. But um, we we don't see that as done. Um, the neural nets are going to continue to learn more specific material types. The accuracy will continue to improve. And we're expecting several substantive improvements to the robot's performance. Uh, this year, primarily driven through software, just the robot's getting smarter about picking from the data we have. Uh, but the, it's sort of all part of the offering we have in AM. Uh, and a lot, yeah, most, so much of it is software driven. Excellent. And my last question, Matanya, is looking at the uh, recycling industry as a whole and the infusion of your technology and other technology, technology in general, right. into this industry, how do you think it's been affecting it and will continue to affect the recycling industry? Yeah, it, um, so we, we kind of think about it in two ways. There's our technology and other technology, there's sort of an immediate focus on cost. Like, where can you bring cost out of the system? Where can you bring reliability up so you have better utilization and all of these things? Uh, and that's all extremely important. And I would say that's kind of the bulk of what we sell our robots as doing. But what I get particularly excited about is creating new revenue streams or higher revenue streams for the industry by increasing the purity of the materials, by increasing the specificity of what gets separated out. Um, and their AI as a technology uh, can be particularly powerful. It can be very specific about um, what you're separating. Clamshells versus bottles are a great example, but there's many others. Different subtypes of paper, uh, different subtypes of plastic resin, um, and uh, you know, separation of aerosols from aluminum foils and this sort of thing. And so um, we think that between the two of these, you're fundamentally making recycling a better business. Like recycling is going to get more lucrative, it's going to become more widespread, it'll go to bigger areas, it'll go to smaller communities. And that's what we're really excited about is just sort of the expansion of recycling infrastructure.